Hey there everyone, welcome to Violet's Dream Tarot. This is the June predictions reading. So this is the general predictions. I will do a separate video for love predictions, um, but this is just kind of general, so it will cover basically whatever comes up is what I'll talk about. So we may get some love messages in this reading, but if you aren't interested in that, it's fine. You can just, you know, not take that on board. Um, but I can't control what comes out of the cards basically. But for all of you who want a more in-depth love prediction for June, I will film that soon as well and put that on YouTube. So before we get started, I wanna say a big thank you to all of my lovely patrons, including Alex, Kat, Alexandra, and Ashley. Thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me and really helps me to get lots of new stuff for the channel. And thank you also for She's Lorny, um, because Today we're using the Happy Tarot again, and for those of you who didn't watch the, I think it was the fairy tale reading that I did recently, um, which is part of a series by the way, there are going to be more coming along there. We're using the Happy Tarot, and I'm so grateful for you sending me that. It is so beautiful, and anyone who wants to do a similar thing, there is an Amazon wish list in the description box. I'm going to put together a list of some indie decks as well that I would really like in the future. Um, and anyone who wants to become a patron and support the channel, thank you so much for your kindness and your generosity. The link is in the description box. We do exclusive pick a card videos on there. I sometimes offer kind of random things like angel healings and I am planning to do more stuff like that on there in the future. There's also a monthly prize draw at the end of each month to win a reading with me. So do check it out if you're a fan of the channel and you'd like to show some support and get some rewards back for your kind donations. But anyone who also would like to leave a tip or just a small one-off donation, that's also really kind of you. There is a PayPal link in the description box. So I'm using my little sum sums today again, because I know that these were quite popular when I put them on one of my recent videos. I can't remember which one it was now. It might have been a singles love reading. Um, so two of these I did use in that video and I have so many more at home. Like honestly, in my mother's house, I've got like a enormous bag with probably about 80 of these but I just grabbed a handful and brought some with me to Russia so in the future I'll be able to get some more diverse um some sums on there but on pile one today we've got Captain Hook from Peter Pan honestly he's possibly my favorite Disney character and I know that sounds really weird but there's just something about him that I really like <laughs> and on pile two we've got Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. They're so soft and it's so cute. And pile three is the lovely Sully from Monsters Inc. Also a really lovely character that I really loved as a child. If anyone else had the PlayStation 1 game of Monsters Inc, I think it was called Scare Island. It was so much fun. Yeah, those old games were the best. <laughs> Honestly, if you have a favorite PlayStation game, um, from the early days like PS1 and 2, comment below because I would love to see what you guys enjoyed playing as well. I also really loved Spyro and Crash Bandicoot. They were like my, my big favorite games. So basically whichever character or maybe card pile if you prefer to go by looking at the cards, whichever one is really calling your name, that's going to be your predictions um, for June. And I did get a comment recently with someone saying what happens if I'm drawn to one card pile and one character but they're not of the same pile. That's also fine. Um, if you're drawn to two characters or two card piles or kind of one of each, you can watch both because it may be that both piles don't resonate with you 100% but there are things in there that, that resonate um, from both piles. Just remember guys, this is not a private reading. This is a general reading on YouTube channels nearly at 5,000 subscribers, which I can't believe. That's just so amazing. So it's got to reach a lot of people and kind of fit a lot of people's situations. So my little cards have got a big job to do. So if it doesn't resonate 100%, that's fine. Just take what resonates and leave what doesn't. And I should also say, if you want to book a private reading, the link to my Etsy page is in the description box. Please remember to leave your email address, your question, and the names of everyone involved when you book a reading. Thank you so much. And I think that's all I have to say in my intro. So when you've picked your character and you can pause the video if you need to, if you need some more time, or if you wanna get a closer look, like um, zoom in a little bit, 
that's totally fine. But when you've chosen, I'm going to start with pile number one, which is Captain Hook. Hey there, everyone who picked pile number one with Captain James Hook. Welcome to your reading. We're just going to pop him there to look at your cards from a distance. It would really be lovely, I think, if there was a Peter Pan tarot or oracle deck. I don't know why. I just really like the, all of the symbolism from Neverland. I just think it's a really nice deck. And there is a Peter Pan card in these inner child cards. Um, so maybe that's come out for you today. That would be re really weird if it was. Um, but it would be really nice to just have a deck that's just completely based on Peter Pan, I think. So we're going to look at these happy tarot cards first to see what's coming up for you in June. And then we'll take a look at your oracle cards. So we've got two of pentacles there. Let's move those out of the way. Judgment. And justice. Okay. Okay, so firstly with the two of pentacles, it seems like you've been juggling a lot recently or that you've been quite busy when it comes to work maybe you've been struggling to find a work-life balance or maybe just work in general has been very stressful or you've been worried about your money as I'm sure a lot of people have been at the moment worried about where their income is coming from if that's been halted or or cut quite dramatically there's a feeling with the two of pentacles of being worried about money or worried about the job and also it's this feeling of I'm not able to to correctly juggle these two issues or these two worries. You see he's holding them in each hand, but often it shows someone who's really struggling to hold both of them and keep that equilibrium. You know, this infinity symbol here isn't perfectly horizontal. It's like slipping slightly. So there's a feeling of worry or, or pressure there when it comes to finances. And then with judgment and justice, I think it's interesting that you've got two major arcana cards together and they're both about doing the right thing and they're both about karma as well so I don't know if you've pulled yourself out of situations recently where people have not been acting in their integrity and you've chosen to kind of take the moral high ground or maybe this is related to your work situation like maybe you are just starting out in your career or you've just recently switched careers because you've decided to do what you want to do rather than maybe what is lucrative or what your parents or friends would want you to do there's a feeling here of you doing what feels right on the inside and what really resonates with you on a soul level and you being rewarded for that. So when we get the judgment card, it says that people will get their karma depending on the thoughts and the actions and the energy that they've put out into this world. So if you've been behaving in a just way, if you've been acting in your integrity, and I know that we all have negative thoughts sometimes, we all get frustrated with ourselves or with other people or with a situation, um, but it's saying if you have genuinely been acting in your integrity and, you know, doing what you know is right and what you really feel is the right thing to do rather than just trying to manipulate a situation or get one over on someone, then you will be rewarded for that. And people who have been acting in a sly or negative or toxic way, they will equally get their karma and it's not going to be fun for them. So I've said that I will do... A video of people are interested on what will their karma be if anyone has hurt you or behaved very negatively or toxically towards you we can see what they are going to get as a result of that um, just so that you know for your own peace of mind what is what to expect what's going to come forward for them so I have added that to my list of future videos but it's interesting that you've got those two cards together that's quite powerful I would say so let's see what your oracle cards say. Well, actually, the inner child card is also a tarot card, but I just see it as something that's so different to tarot and to oracle because the cards don't always match up with the traditional meanings and they're just so symbolic in so many ways and they're enormous as well. Look how big this, this card is. <laughs> oh, you've got Guide of Hearts. Okay, so this is the Queen of Cups in this deck and it's the Good Fairy from the Wizard of Oz, Glinda, or Garlinda, if you've watched Wicked. And if you haven't seen that theatre show, I really, really recommend it because it's a great show. Um, I love this this character. She's so 
nice and glittery and pretty. And so we've got the Wizard of Oz escaping in the hot air balloon here, and we've got the Emerald City. And so this is at the point where, if you've not seen the movie or read the book, Dorothy and her friends have reached the Wizard of Oz, and he's actually not a great wizard. He's a bit of a con man. And so he hasn't been able to fulfill their wishes in the way that they'd hoped. And Dorothy is really upset and despondent. She feels like she's put in so much effort and now she's never going to be able to get back home, which is what she was trying to do all along. And at this minute, like at the 11th hour, the good fairy comes in and tells her that she was able to go home all along because she was wearing these shoes that she can click and they'll take her home. But she needed to learn certain lessons along the way about bravery and courage and friendship and loyalty. So she was allowing her to kind of learn those lessons and now she's, you know, giving her the, the answer to her wishes. So when I get this card, I think that maybe you have been despairing recently. Maybe you've been through a very difficult situation like this issue that's coming up with judgment and justice could be something that's been very upsetting and, and toxic for you. It could be to do with work as well, but I'm feeling like for some of you, the work issue is separate and this judgment and justice card is to do with relationships. So just take it how it resonates for you. But I feel like if you have been through a very difficult time and you've been worrying that you're not going to see the light at the end of the tunnel or that you've been through all of this suffering and this difficult time and you don't know what the lesson was at the end of it. You don't understand why you had to go through that when maybe there would have been, in your eyes, a more kind or gentle way for you to learn that lesson. It's saying that at the 11th hour, your angels, your spirit guides, your ancestors are going to come in and help you. And they may work through someone who is around you. They may work through, you know, a physical person who kind of acts as an earth angel at that moment, or they may put you in a situation where you get an opportunity like a job offer for example if that's what you've been worried about um, or you may get that pay packet that you've been waiting for and if it is to do with relationships then I just think this card is saying don't worry because everyone will get what they've put out into the world you know that this is the good fairy of the north and the wicked people the wicked witch and her flying monkeys are defeated in this story you know they are they are they cut they find their comeuppance uh, they get their comeuppance and so I feel like those people are going to get their karma and you will have your reward whether you can imagine this for yourself right now or not but I think this is just such a powerful card so sorry for rambling on here but I just kind of got lost in this beautiful image of of this kind fairy who's like a guardian angel in many ways and the feeling of salvation and, and improvement that she's going to bring for you so let's see what else we've got so we've got a sacred traveler oracle card journey by moonlight believe in magic so yeah again this feeling of if you can't believe it then then start to believe because it's going to happen for you that you're going to see these beautiful changes and it may come as an opportunity like I said or it may come as you've pulled yourself out of this situation and now things start falling apart for people who have behaved in a negative way and you start getting opportunities or situations coming towards you that you are happy with and it almost seems like I'm hearing synchronicities now so I wonder if you're going to start seeing repeated symbols or repeated numbers or the same word over and over again and it's just going to kind of reinforce that feeling for you that everything's coming together and everything's going to be all right so if you are already seeing synchronicities or if you start seeing those just remember what I've said in this reading it's like that feeling of encouragement and confirmation so your moonology card says a win-win outcome is forecast full moon in Libra so we've got Libra energy oh we've got Libra energy here as well with the justice card I forgot to mention that that's interesting you may be a Libra or you may have that quite strongly in your chart or in a prominent position but this is saying again that things will work out for you and this win-win outcome is forecast is interesting because I was just saying that people who've been behaving in a negative way will get their comeuppance but that's good for them as well like whether they realize it at the time or not it is going to teach them to be a better person in the long run it is going to teach them 
maybe a hard lesson or a lesson that they don't realize until later down the line, but it is all in aid of their spiritual development and in aid of them becoming a better person. So your wisdom of the Oracle card is by the book, and this is 11, like the Justice card in this deck. I know for me, I always associate the Justice card with the number eight, but in the Rider Waite tarot, it is number 11. So this by the book card is also making me think of you just wanting to act in your integrity. You want to do everything as it should be done. You want to do things by the book. And I'm feeling like gradual improvement here because I'm seeing this is like your guides showing you the way out of the desert. Like they're leading you out of this difficult situation. And you've just got to trust in them and just kind of, it's like this baby elephant just holding on to um, mummy elephant's tail there. Just keep keep trusting, keep having faith, and you will be pulled out of this situation. But keep acting in your integrity. That keeps coming up here with the Libra and the Justice and the Judgment. And now this card as well, it's just saying, like, make sure that you're not going to do or say something out of anger that you're going to regret later or that's going to have negative energetic repercussions for you. So just make sure that you are being the bigger person at all times. I love this phrase um, that... I can't even remember where I heard it for the first time, but I just really like thinking it to remind me when I'm also going through that kind of situation. There's a wonderful view from the moral high ground. <laughs> so just remember that. And your Savieti Lososia card is Stielana is Vostucha, so made from air. And this also feels like something is just going to come out of nothing or come out of nowhere for you, like an opportunity or suddenly a new perspective on the situation or just a new it's like a new chapter like you're you're seeing the world differently and suddenly things start changing on the inside for you and then on the outside as well and it's like well where did that come from so that's what I was saying here about it's like the 11th hour suddenly everything changes and the judgment card is also the 11th hour because it's that last card before the world before the end of the major arcana so that's a really interesting repeated message that you're getting and of course libra is an air sign so you may have a lot of air energy in your chart gemini and aquarius are also included in this and this says six of arrows um so that might mean something for you this deck doesn't have a guidebook you've just got to do everything by your intuition but it just makes me think of the six of wands actually when i see the six of arrows there um so that is also like victory and things improving for you and good news coming in for you so that's really interesting i'm going to put your charms on top now root number one so it might be a little bit loud if you're wearing headphones you might want to turn it down because these are made of metal mainly so what is coming up for group number one in june 2020 So have we got any initials here? Yeah, we've got E. Okay, so that's our only initial today is E. So that might resonate with you as someone's first name or surname or a place name, for example, but don't worry if it doesn't. So we've got the cupcake here, which is all about treating yourself and indulging yourself. So take care of yourself at this time. And if you can treat yourself, if you have the money, for example, to buy you know, some little comfort for yourself, whether that is some nice makeup or some nice new clothes or just some nice food, you know, whatever it is that makes you feel kind of comfy and, and taken care of. If you have the means to do that, then why not indulge yourself a little bit in this month? We've also got the witch on her broomstick, so that's all about magic again. And, and the good fairy is a witch as well, so that's interesting. And the unicorn here, so this is about someone very special, but now I'm thinking of purity when I see the unicorn. And again, keeping your intentions and your actions pure and acting out of your integrity. And that's also what I get from the chair, because this is about being upright and firm and solid and stable. Um, when I see that chair, I just think of something kind of unshakable, something sturdy. 
got these two angel wings here, which is really beautiful as well. So definitely strong angelic presence around you at this time that's coming through quite strongly. So we've got the stag here. Now the stag is springtime energy, but it's also the divine masculine energy. So I wonder if this has been a love situation for some of you or a situation involving a man. But it seems to be like an equalizing now, like everything's equaling out and things are kind of smoothing over so that you can move forward. And we've got the paw print here, which is about following someone. Maybe you're following them on social media and might be time to take a step back from that if that's kind of been upsetting you seeing what they've been posting or maybe it's them who are following you and you keep noticing that they're watching your stories or that they're commenting or liking what you post that's what I get from the paw print but also I'm thinking like animal spirits as well it's quite a strong spirit realm feeling from this reading so I do wonder if you are quite surrounded by a lot of of divine energy at this time and you're maybe not even aware of it because that journey by moonlight card is saying you're not allowing yourself to believe but you should like you should look at everything with this childlike energy and see the magic all around you so i can see also the gun here and the gun for me is a symbol of all negative emotions so like anger like blame or guilt or resentment jealousy hatred even, all these things that we carry around with us after something has happened and they're just hurting us. So if you're carrying that grudge or that resentment around after someone has hurt you or after you've broken up with someone, for example, that's not hurting that person. The fact that you hate them isn't hurting them in any way. They've moved on. It's just hurting you by continuing to carry around all of that that tension and that aggressive energy within you. So there's a need to release that now. We've got this flower, which is a symbol of beauty. So again, allowing yourself to see that beauty in the world around you. And this is Om, the mantra charm. So Om is what some people chant when they're meditating. So this is saying to me, keep a particular word or phrase in your mind to keep you focused. So have that mantra and it may be, there's a great view from the moral high ground or it may be just integrity or it may be just believe or something like that. Whatever you want to keep in mind whenever you're wavering or feeling low or, you know, just having those negative thoughts, just remind yourself of that phrase or that word to pull you back into center because there's a strong feeling of balance here. So now we've got the gingerbread man and this is about something happening slowly, something unfolding slowly. So like I said, I feel like this has been, this situation has been unfolding for a while now. I don't think this has happened like right, like today or a, a few days ago. Like I think this has been at least a few weeks, if not longer for you, this situation and it's been hurting you. And so that's why I'm saying this feeling of the 11th hour, like it's like the, the help hasn't arrived for weeks, so why would it arrive now? Is what I'm getting from this reading, but it is going to arrive. We've got a fairy on that good fairy card. That's so weird because when, um, when I was shuffling the charms, I saw this little character, which always symbolizes fairy energy for me. And I was thinking, oh, it's weird that I'm looking at him, but I'm not pulling that out because that would be a nice synchronicity to have that fairy energy. But then this fell out and I completely forgot that there was this charm in the in the tin and it landed on this card. So that's really beautiful. So maybe you do also feel a strong connection to fairies and earth and air elementals because there's a little fairy on this card as well. So that may be something that you are feeling quite drawn to because I do identify this fairy a lot as being like an angel because she is like Dorothy's guardian angel. She's always watching over her and she's always available when she needs her. Like she can call and, and she'll be there. Um, but she lets her make her own mistakes as well. And she lets her um, learn her own lessons, which is what guardian angels do. But yeah, that's really nice that you've got that fairy there, which is a symbol of magic as well, like that witch charm. So we've got the growth symbol here. And this again is what I was saying, like, when this person or people get their karma, it is for their own 
spiritual growth so I know that we can be tempted to look at it as like a revenge kind of thing and that's not going to be the focus of the video that I do because I don't believe that revenge is helpful for anyone but I just want it to be a video that will help you kind of just make your peace with the situation and get your closure so I also see the hope charm here as well the candle and the word love that's really nice Definitely a lot of love coming in from the spirit realm for you. So let's do your dice now. See which set of dice I'm gonna roll for you, pile number one. Three. Okay, so that's the mystery story cubes. And how many dice am I rolling for pile number one today? Two, okay. So not many dice today, but I don't want to roll all nine of them if there's going to be seven that that haven't got a message for you because that would just be confusing and, and not helpful. Okay, so if you're new to my channel, I use a lot of different divination techniques to get a full reading for you just because I like to see synchronicities in the messages that we get. So what's coming up for group number one in June 2020? Okay, so this nice sense of balance here again with the day and the night, like the, the darkness and the light coming into balance. And I think it is also important to remember that we need the, the darker times in life to appreciate the good. We need the rougher times so that when we do have an enjoyable and a smooth life, we really appreciate how good it is because otherwise we would just take things for granted and we'd become quite a conceited and maybe arrogant person who just expects the world to to give them everything and I think it's it's really an important thing of learning resilience and learning that you know we have difficult situations and that makes us more compassionate so again just realizing whatever lesson might be related to the situation that you've experienced and then we've got the trap door here, like the person falling through the trap door. So this again makes me feel like you don't believe that things could get better because it's landed here on this card, which says believe in magic. And it's like, it almost seems from your energy that when things are going well for you, you're almost thinking like, okay, so what's the catch? Like, when is, when is something going to go horribly wrong? Like, okay, my finances are doing well. That means my love life is going to start crashing down or, you know, everything's fine at home. So my friendship circle is going to start being really unstable. It's like you almost expect that there's not a balance in things and that when, as soon as one thing starts going well, something else has to go horribly wrong. Or you think that when everything seems to be going smooth, it's kind of like, well, I'm being lulled into a false sense of security. Like that's what I'm feeling from your energy. So please do just believe that things can improve and do believe that your angels are around you and your spirit guides. I'm getting ancestors as well coming through because um, I'm feeling that quite strongly around you from the cards that have come out. So do just believe that they are there and that they do want to help you. Do talk to your angels and your spirit guides. They can't help you unless you ask for their help, unless it's a life or death situation. So do make sure that you are checking in with them and letting them know how you feel and what's going on for you. And do remember to ask them for their help to make the situation better or to make it um, balance out for everyone involved. So that's all I have for you today, group number one, and I hope you've really enjoyed it. I hope it's given you some, some clarity and some things to think about. Do let me know in the comments below how it resonated with you and also like, share with a friend and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more from me. As I said, I will do the love reading for June soon. That's probably going to be the next thing that I film because we're getting pretty close to June now and I want to make sure that it's out there for, for people to get ready for. All the links for private readings and ways to support the channel are in the description box, as I said at the beginning of the video. And thank you so much for everyone who does show their love and gratitude by um, helping me out a little bit with a donation or by becoming a patron. That's really, really lovely. Have a lovely rest of your day, group number one. And thank you so much for joining me. And I'll see you again soon. Bye bye. Take care. Hey there, everyone who picked pile number two with Stitch. This is your reading, so I'm just going to put him there. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. So we're going to look at your happy tarot cards first, and then we'll look at your oracle cards. So let's see what's coming up for you in June. So we've got the lovers, okay. The nine of wands. And the hanged man, okay. So we've got that love message coming through here. So do ignore this if if you're not interested in love, but I feel like those of you who've picked this pile, this is probably an issue for you coming up because that was your first card. So we've got Gemini energy coming through there with the lovers. Um, it does look like there is someone that you're interested in in this month, but with the nine of wands and the hangman there, I'm wondering if you've been experiencing difficulties in a relationship. So for those of you who are in a relationship, I don't know if you have been kind of having, maybe having arguments with your partner or wondering if they're the right person for you. The hangman there is talking about thinking, maybe trying to make some kind of decision, maybe choosing to take a break from a relationship or, you know, t taking that time for yourself to consult yourself inside and see what really you actually want from life. But that lover's card is interesting. So I just want to go ahead and pull a romance angel card for you. And I'm sorry if this, again, isn't something you're interested in, just bear with me. So what's coming up for group number two in their love life in June 2020? Okay, Let's see what that says. So we've got playfulness. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. Okay, yeah, so there's a sense of wanting to release whatever this burden is of the nine of wands. It seems like in a relationship, if you're already in one, you've been experiencing difficulties or things have become kind of like a chore or you've been having arguments with each other. It's like you're, it kind of seems like a duty rather than something you're choosing to stay in. And if you're not in a relationship, then it feels like you've been taking your love life too seriously and you've been putting so much pressure on yourself thinking, well, you know, I've been online dating for, for three weeks and I haven't found anyone that I'm interested in yet. They don't all meet, you know, they don't all tick every single one of my boxes and so it feels like you've been putting this burden on yourself and so that playfulness card is saying that in June it's time to just be a bit more light-hearted about love and try and bring back the fun and remember that it is supposed to be fun and it is supposed to make your your heart sing and and you feel excited it's not supposed to be a kind of a a chore that you feel bound by just because you want to be in a relationship so let's see what your inner child card says, because I'm interested now. So this is actually tarot as well, but I just, I find these cards so different from regular tarot that I kind of set them in a different um, category. So you've got seven of crystals. Okay, so this is the seven of pentacles, and this is a little, a little gnome, like my little gnomes in the background. And so she's lighting these candles, and she's waiting for her day to come, essentially. She's waiting for the day that she's counting down to with the candles and we can see it's winter outside, it's cold, but she's in this cozy little space. She's built this little sanctuary for herself. This is her cozy home. And I've noticed also that she's on this rainbow rug. So this feeling of inclusion and this feeling of having everything balanced within her, like there's no there's no leaning towards any particular color. It's like everything is represented here. So that's really interesting. But I do feel like a lot of you aren't in relationships and you've just been, you feel like you've been waiting so long with this card that it's almost like the right person is not going to come and like you're running out of time. And that sense of worry there that we get with this person, he's holding this wand in front of him that actually looks like a chocolate finger. Um, he's holding that in front of him and it's it's giving him this defensive energy because he's like I need this to come about for me and I need to to have this experience and so it's coming across defensively and so I wonder if you are someone who's dating or is is looking online for potential dates maybe you're coming across as being very desperate um, and I don't mean that to be mean to you, but I think sometimes we can just tell when someone has been waiting a long time or they have very high expectations of what a relationship will bring to them, they can come across in quite an intense way. So I would just say maybe have a think about 
how you're coming across to people and also why you feel this way. Is it because you're worried that you won't have enough time to get married and have children if that's what you want to do? Is it because you worry that you've just been dating so long but never found someone that you really click with, like 100%? Like maybe they, they're great in the way that they look and maybe they have a good job but just emotionally that you don't have that that click or maybe someone's a really nice person and also really stable in in their career but they're just you're not attracted to them physically so it feels like maybe a lot of you have been experiencing this where you've been dating people but they've not been filling all of your boxes and so you're like surely there's someone who's a better match for me out there and you're waiting for that person let's see what other cards you've got so your sacred traveler oracle card says choosing your path all is possible so this is a lovely card and this is just reminding you the world is your oyster so again don't be worried there are so many people out there in the world and i was just saying to someone the other day i often find it so incredible how there will be so many people in this world who have similar interests to us and who enjoy the same things that we do but we will never ever get to meet them because there are just billions of people in the world and we only ever meet a, a tiny handful of those people. So it's like just reminding you that there are so many people out there in the world and there are so many options for you as well, even outside of love. Like I think a lot of you have been questioning what you want to do career-wise or, or where you want to go in your life in general. With the hangman, it's this feeling of deep introspection and really looking into your life and thinking, well, what do I value and what what is important to me in life and it's like this moment of well here are all all the wonderful options you could choose so that's a really beautiful card and your moonology card says the end of a tough cycle approaches full moon in capricorn so that's nice so we've got capricorn energy coming through now that could be in your birth chart that could be your sign sun moon rising maybe venus sign but with that lover's card, I do wonder if you're going to find someone in this month then. Because at first, when I saw the lover's card, I was thinking, okay, it's bringing up romance as a topic. Um, but I didn't want to say you might meet someone to get people's hopes up if that was not going to be what the rest of the card seemed to say. But it does look like you are changing your perspective here. And that may also have these implications in the external world. It may be that someone comes towards you and you really click with that person. So that's a really lovely card to get. So your Wisdom of the Oracle card says Fork in the Road. This is so interesting that you've got these cards together, this feeling of choosing and, and you know, looking at what direction you're going to go in in life. That's so interesting. Maybe you'll end up choosing between two people romantically or maybe this is like a job thing for some of you. Maybe it's to do with, with where you want to live. There's just this sense of... I could carry on as I have been or I could do something completely different or it's like okay I've come to a point in my life where I've now got to choose between two options and maybe they're both equally good or maybe they they have pros and cons but they equal out and it's this feeling of well I don't know I'm gonna have to go with what intuitively feels better for me you know sometimes we just get that gut feeling and it's like I'm leaning I'm leaning more towards this one so your Savieti Los Socio card says experimentiroi, which is experiment in the imperative. So like, go ahead and experiment. So I wonder if this is talking about romantically with this playfulness card. Again, be lighthearted and don't go into situations romantically or in your friendship circle where you're expecting like a long-term thing. Just go ahead and, and get to know people and take the pressure off yourself, make it fun again, just remember that this is something that you're supposed to enjoy and so if you've really been grinding yourself down and thinking like I'm never going to meet someone, it's hopeless, um, you know, there, no one ever wants something long term or no one ever seems to be the right person for me, just breathe and just remember that it doesn't always have to be about that straight away. And although that is your goal, ultimately, it's fine to just get to know people and see where it goes from there without putting the pressure on yourself and on the other person as well. Because even if you're not saying that in, in the way that you're talking to them, it will come across to them energetically. And that can push people away. So just experiment, try a few different things, especially if you're also thinking about career wise, or moving somewhere, because I'm getting that for some of you as well. Just try things out. If you can visit places in June, 
Um, obviously that will be different for everyone if you can, if you're looking at moving away. See if you can visit them or research them or talk to people who live there. If you're thinking about changing jobs or you're not sure which job you want to do if you're recently coming out of school or university, try a few different things. You know, see what you would enjoy. See if you can get some apprenticeships or some um, shadow work where you just follow people and see what they do for a couple of days. See if it's it, something you would enjoy. And this is 11 of crosses. So if that means anything to you, take it on board. This deck doesn't have a guidebook. You've just got to do it with your intuition. So I'm going to put your charms on top now, group number two. And if you're wearing headphones, you might want to turn down the volume a little bit because these can be a bit loud when I shuffle. So group number two, what is coming up for you in June 2020? Okay, so have we got any initials? We've got one initial and that's E. And that's interesting because pile one also only had an E, but I think it was the pink E. So I have I have all initials in pink and in blue, but like it wasn't the same charm that came out, if you see what I mean, it was just the same um, letter. So instantly, pile number two, I am drawn to this crown, which has beautifully landed on the choosing your path card. So. If you've watched my channel before and this charm has come out, you'll know that this is about free will and it's about being the sovereign of your life and making the decisions that that are relevant to you and not letting that be influenced or dictated by anyone else. So if you feel like you're being pushed down a particular path work-wise or love-wise or maybe just being pushed to stay in a certain town or city by your family or by your friends, if there's any kind of peer pressure going on there, just remember that you can remove yourself from that. As difficult as that might seem, you can. You can choose to distance yourself from that and you can choose to make those choices um, from your own intuition. Like I said before, what feels right for you. There's also a little love heart here. So that's a nice little continuation of, of the love theme. Ooh, drop that. So pile number two, I think you should definitely watch a love predictions video for next month that's focused specifically on love, whether that is with my channel or with someone else's. I think that that will give you some more insight into what's coming up. And we've also got the chivalry charm for you here. So that is talking about sticking to your word. So if you promise yourself that you're going to do something, or if you've always said, oh, I really want to do this, I really want to experience this, it's like on my bucket list, then go ahead and do it. Stick to your word and what you've promised yourself. And I see also the skeleton here. So when we get the skeleton, it talks about skeletons in the closet. So this would be things from the past that we find negative. So it could be bad memories. It could be trauma from the past. It could be people that we really don't want to, to see again that kind of resurface in our lives. And this is just saying these skeletons need to be cleared out of the closet. So you may get some closure with someone in this month. You may need to start thinking about yourself in a different way. For example, if you grew up and you were always told that you were stupid or that you were ugly or that you were clumsy or fat or whatever, just remember that that wasn't true. That was just a reflection of what that person was feeling within themselves. And so they needed to put you down to make themselves feel better. So just remember if that is something that resonates with you, that those words that were said by bullies or by adults who should have known better when you were younger. Um, that's not true and it's certainly not true today just as it wasn't true then. So I'm also seeing the fortress charm here which is about shutting yourself away from other people and kind of closing yourself off in many ways and that's interesting because this little gnome girl is in this kind of safe cozy environment away from other people so I wonder if you do need to kind of distance yourself from people more generally in this month. You've also got an owl here. Oh, two owls. <laughs> two owls. So that might have a, a special meaning for you as a spirit animal or a certain symbol. But owls, to me, are a guidance that's coming to you to say, listen to your inner wisdom. And that again is what I was saying before, like don't let other people influence your choices. Just go by what feels right on the inside for you. 
see the axe here as well on the hanged man and that's making me think of defensiveness so don't get defensive there's no need to justify your decisions to anyone else you don't need anyone else's validation or or approval in order to do what you want to do just keep moving forward and there's no need to get defensive but I see this nice key here. So this is saying that you will find a solution to a situation in this month. So that's nice. Like what I was saying about closure, finding solutions as well, maybe making an important decision, finally settling on one of your options. So we've got live, love, laugh here. And that's just what that playfulness card is saying. It's saying simplify your life, enjoy the little things, don't get so wound up in, in seriousness and in worries and anxieties. Also got the tree, which is talking about stability and growth. The witch with her cauldron. This is saying that you are in a process or that you're processing something. But I think a lot of you, it's more like you're in a process. So if you have been feeling a bit lost or confused recently, I see that kind of coming full circle, this nice full moon card. And then we've got the birdcage here. So you have been feeling trapped in some way, feeling like you can't, you can't release yourself from a situation. <laughs> That's nice. We've got this angel wing. So you are surrounded by angels at this time. Angels are watching over you and protecting you. And we have an acorn as well. So this is the symbol of new beginnings and of potential. So this is like, in a way, I want to say it's the start of a new chapter for you. But I feel like it's almost like you realizing how much potential you have and how much potential your life has so if you've been feeling that life has kind of run away with you and you're running out of time or that you can't make any big life changes now because it's too late for you that's absolutely not the case at all you've got that acorn there that's saying this is just in many ways the beginning for you so i'm going to put your dice on top now let's see which set of dice we're rolling for group two three okay so that's the the dice that that pile number one got which is the mystery story cubes and how many dice am i rolling for group number two today eight okay so if you're new to my channel i use a lot of different divination techniques to get a full reading because i like to see synchronicities in cards and charms and dice so what is coming up for group number two in June 2020? Okay, let's see what we've got. Okay, so I see the puppet over here. And that again is making me feel that you're letting yourself and your choices and your actions be dictated by others. So again, that's just tying in with that crown there and these cards about choice that's telling you that you need to seize back the control of your life and make the choices that are right for you. I also see the no trespassing sign. So again, this feeling of the fortress shutting other people out, maybe going no contact with people or choosing to cut out and distance yourself from toxic people. And there's the lighthouse here and it's nice that it's landed on the card that it's landed on because the lighthouse is guiding you through the darkness to a better place. It's guiding you to a place of safety. So again, that feeling of the hard times are ending. And so we've got the outline of the body here. And again, I'm just feeling like something has really flawed you recently. You've been feeling the pressure or the burden of a situation and now it's time to just move forward and to free yourself from that. We've got the partners in crime here. So again, I'm wondering if there are some kind of negative people in your social circle or people that, um, I don't wanna say they're trying to bring you down, but I wonder if there are people that maybe they talk badly about other people and that kind of isn't good for your energy or they just, they're just not nice people generally. I've also got this person with the, I've forgotten what it's called, it's like a binocular, but just one, a, mon a monocle thing um, on his eye. And this is about looking more closely at a situation. And that's, for me, resonating with that hanged man about going within and really deeply looking at your life and deciding what you want to do and considering your options. 
And we've got the fingerprint here. The fingerprint always makes me think of evidence normally, but this is like something's left a mark on you. Something you've been carrying it around for a very long time. You know, like how you you touch your window and you leave that that fingerprint on the glass and you might not always realise it's there, but then when the light shines in a certain way, you see it and it just completely taints the whole window. I'm just getting this feeling of someone's actions or words, you've been carrying them around for so long and they've left that that mark upon you and it's time to release that now. It's time to just wipe that away and say, um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't real at the time and it also isn't true now or I'm just releasing myself from this situation and ridding this person from my life and from my energy. There's a sense here of wanting to wipe that away that I'm getting with that dice. And then I've got the TV here as well. So this feeling of just being cozy at home and just watching things that you enjoy maybe watching things to take your mind off a certain situation. And that might not be on TV, it could also be on YouTube or other online streaming services. I don't know, there's Netflix, but I don't know what else there is. I don't have anything like that. So that's what I have for you today, group number two. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that it's given you some kind of insight into what's coming up for you in June. Looks like a really interesting month for you with a lot of things coming full circle and cycles closing off and you moving forward in life which is really nice to see so do let me know below how it resonated with you in the comments and don't forget to like share with a friend and subscribe if you enjoyed this video i am going to do the love reading soon as i said it's probably going to be the next video that i upload uh, so stay tuned for that and all of the links if you want to support the channel or if you want to get a private reading are in the description box as always Thank you so much for joining me today and for, for being a part of this lovely growing family, this little community that we're building on here. I can't believe we're nearly at 5,000 subscribers. It's really crazy. But have a lovely rest of your day, pile number two, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Take care. Hey there, everyone who picked group number three with Sully. This is your reading, so I'm going to put him there and he'll watch us from the corner. So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm just going to move those out of the way and we're going to look at your tarot cards first. So let's see what's coming up for you in June 2020. So you've got the strength card first and foremost and that's Leo energy there. We've got the two of wands. And the eight of swords. Okay. So quite a bit of fire energy at the start and then some air energy as well. So what I'm seeing here is that you have been through perhaps a tough time recently. That strength card is saying that you are wanting to move on from a situation where you maybe need to forgive people for what they've said or done, to have that closure, to release that resentment or that negative energy or emotions that you're still feeling that's tied up with that situation but that two of wands card is showing that you're now looking towards the future but with the eight of swords it's like you're looking towards the future and you want to welcome in a new life but it's almost like you feel that you can't accept it for yourself that you feel like things aren't going to improve things aren't going to change it's almost like you feel stuck in this cycle of having a negative experience or a very difficult or upsetting experience and then you start to get better and then trust someone or, or put yourself out there and then something else happens that's negative and it feels like you've kind of been in this cycle for quite a while now maybe people have been betraying your trust or maybe you have just not been succeeding at work um, in the way that you'd wanted to or in your studies there's just a sense here of we need this closure, we need to break this cycle. We need this cycle to end because I'm seeing above something that's really drawing me in is this infinity symbol above this woman's head. And also that is the eight, which we've got here with the eight of swords. So this feeling of this cycle that needs to be broken here. But I'm really loving this card in the center, this looking towards the future. So let's see what your other cards have to say start with your inner child card so this is also a tarot card but to me they're often so different from the regular tarot cards that I just put them in um, a category all of their own so let's see what we've got 
So we have Ace of Swords here, and this is King Arthur pulling Excalibur out of the sword. Sorry, out of the stone. <laughs> He's pulling the sword out of the stone, and the sword is Excalibur. So this is such a beautiful image for the Ace of Swords card, because Ace of Swords is about truth and about new beginnings and about thinking about things in a different way and, and new perspectives. And that's so interesting because by pulling the sword out of the stone, Arthur revealed to everyone that he was destined to be the King of England. So it was like this moment of awakening and this moment of truths being revealed and a new beginning as well in his life and in his journey. So that's really nice that that's coming through there because that's such a beautiful symbolism on this card. So I'm seeing you being able to break that cycle now. We've got that sword to cut the ties that surround you. We've got the sword that is the symbol of truth and the symbol of power and strength as well. But with that strength card coming out, it's not a physical strength. It is a spiritual strength. And that's shown as well with the story of King Arthur with the sword and the stone. Because there were men who were much, much stronger than him who tried many times to pull the sword out of the stone and it never came out. But because of what was inside Arthur, that spiritual destiny, he was able to pull it out, even though he was only a teenage boy with not not an awful lot of muscle. So he was able to beat the most muscular knights and, and fighters who also tried to pull it out. And it was what was inside of him that was important. And I think also it's making me think of that phrase, the pen is mightier than the sword. And it's just making me think that like we all have, we all wield these different swords in life. Like it may be the pen that we write creatively with. Um, it may be the the violin that we play a beautiful music with. But it's like this this feeling of we all have these different talents in life and these different ways of expressing ourselves because the ace of swords is also all about expression it's the throat chakra it's truths as i said before this feeling of communication and expression so that's really nice as a sense here that we're going to break this cycle and that we're going to move forward in um what's the word we're going to move forward in like a more free and positive way so let's look at your oracle cards. That's a really beautiful message. I'm so pleased that you got that. So your sacred traveler oracle card is embracing enthusiasm, shout to the heavens with happiness. And this is just what I was saying, like this feeling of you can't accept it for yourself. You don't feel like it's going to come. So start to get excited and start to change your perspective with that ace of swords. It's this feeling of we're looking at things and we're thinking about things in a different way. It's a different way of thinking. So you also got two Moonology cards and I just kept both of them because if two jump out, I'll, I'll tend to take them both even if I only want one. So we've got the, ener the energy is gaining momentum, waxing moon. So again, this feeling of we're moving towards something, so we're building up towards this thing. And hold your vision, fixed moon. That's really nice. The energy is gaining momentum, hold your vision. I really like it when they seem to make some kind of sentence like that. So yeah, keep in mind what it is that you want from life. Keep this vision in your mind. Remember that you have so many options and, and opportunities in life. Hold that because it's coming towards you. And by reminding yourself every day of the life that you want to live, whether that's through writing down what you want and then, and then looking at it or having a vision board or something that I often recommend doing is making a Pinterest board with pictures that represent, um, you know, what the kind of life that you really want to have and looking at it every day that will help focus your energy in that direction so then your wisdom of the oracle card is treasure island wow it really seems like you're going to get some positive things coming towards you in this month and that's so nice group number three because i'm really getting a sense from those tarot cards there that you have been through a rough time and that you're really ready and although you might not kind of emotionally think that it's coming for you. I think mentally you're you're just really ready to see a change in your fortune and I see that coming in for you. So that's so beautiful. And then your Savieti Lo Socia card is Sprashuai Sibia. Ask yourself. And it's 12 of crosses, if that means anything to you. 
because this deck doesn't have a guidebook, you've just got to do everything intuitively. But I think that's nice. That's saying like, again, ask yourself what you really want from life and, and be aware of where you're going. Like I was saying, if you can think about what you want your life to look like and then you can find the pictures that represent that. So think, ask yourself, what do I want my friendships to be like? What do I want my career to be like? Even if you don't have an idea of what the perfect career for you is, what kind of qualities do you want from it? Do you want to be able to travel? Do you want to be able to work your own hours? Or would you rather do a fixed set of hours? How important is a high wage to you versus high responsibility in the job, etc.? Like all of these things, think about them and, and find those images that will will represent that for you. So I'm going to put your charms on top now, group number three, and if you're wearing headphones, you might want to turn the volume down a little bit because they can be a bit loud when I shuffle them. Okay, so what's coming up for group number three in June 2020? Okay, so have we got any initials? Yeah, just one. Okay, so we've got the letter Y. So that could be a first name or a surname or a place for you or whatever meaning it has for you. If it doesn't seem to have any meaning, that's totally fine. It might just be for a few people. So we've got this lovely free will crown here and pile number two got this as well and it was really meaningful for them. So there's definitely a feeling here of you making those decisions that are important for you and not allowing anyone else to influence that or to dictate what it is that you're going to do in this life. With the free will crown, it's all about saying that you're the sovereign of your life, like King Arthur. Um, you get to make those choices. You're the main character in this story, essentially. So we've got a god charm here, which is Ganesha. And he is the Hindu god of knowledge and wisdom and also of removing obstacles from a situation so that's very salient with what we've been talking about here um, but whenever I get a god charm if you're new to my channel um, it means that that god is coming out in your reading and he's saying if you feel comfortable doing so and if you feel called to do so then do pray to me or light a candle and, and say a few words or or meditate and call upon me and my energy to give you some help or some guidance at this time and we've got the baby tapir again. So this has been coming out in quite a few private readings for me recently, although I don't know if it's been coming out in the YouTube readings. But when I get the baby tapir, it's talking about someone who is very shy and not very assertive. So someone who feels like they can't ask for help or someone who feels like they can't speak up and and take what they want from life. So I'm wondering if that is if that resonates with what your personality is like and you need to just become more more assertive and and stronger in your personality we've got a lovely love heart there as well like love yourself enough to wish this for yourself so we've got the axe here which is all about defensiveness so again there's no need to justify your decisions or your wishes to anyone else if you want it then go ahead and if it's if it's meant to be you'll get it you've got another god charm that's interesting so we've got two this is hermes or mercury and this fits in with the kind of swords energy that we've been getting here because ace of swords is a card that i would really associate with him and it's kind of a similar image there with the kajikeus staff here um so that's another god that's calling out for you he is the Greek and Roman messenger of the gods. And then on this rose has landed this flower. So this is about blossoming and beauty, but I'm feeling more blossoming, like you opening up and and just becoming more of yourself. Like it feels like you're you're growing within yourself. And then this flexibility charm, this gymnast has landed like this and it's making me think you've been bending over backwards to fulfill other people's 
expectations or to, to meet other people's needs and you've been putting yourself second or last in the situation. You've got another God charm. This is crazy. I don't have that many. So this is Eros or Cupid, however you prefer to call him. And he is the Greek and Roman God of love. And he's coming out for you now as well. So if you feel called to work with any or all of these gods, then I would definitely recommend doing so. I know that some of you won't feel comfortable doing that um, because it, it doesn't fit in line with, with your beliefs. But if you do feel called to do it, I would definitely recommend doing so because it can be very rewarding. So we've got the chivalry charm as well. That's interesting that's come out when we've got the King Arthur card. Um, but this is about sticking to your word. So if you've promised yourself that you're going to do something, or if you've promised yourself that one day you'll be this, or one day you'll go there and, and live in this place, or you'll visit this place, if you have that kind of bucket list, then stick to it. Stick to your word. Stick to what you've promised yourself. Go ahead and go and get it. And here we have the cactus. So this is the sense of being in survival mode for me because cacti, they can store up water for a very long period of time because they live in such a harsh environment. They store it up and they just use it kind of very slowly, very gently. So there's this feeling of I'm in, I'm shut down, I'm in survival mode. So here we've got the mermaid which is a nice charm. And again, interesting that that's come out on that Treasure Island card. I love it when the, the charms and the cards just all kind of combine to make, in a way, a little story. So that mermaid coming out there, you may feel quite drawn towards water elementals like merfolk. That may be something that you personally feel very pulled towards. But the mermaid to me is about temptation and seduction. So feeling drawn to a particular thing or to a particular person at this time. We've also got a guardian angel charm and it is guardian angel for health. So your health is being protected by angels at this time. And we've got the apple, which is my symbol for health. So that's a nice little validation. And then we've got the lion, which is Leo energy. So we've got the strength card as well so definitely some leos among us watching this video but the leo charm is also saying if you're not a leo if that's not something that's quite um, prominent in your chart it's saying don't let pride get in your way of asking for help or don't let pride get in your way of changing your situation don't feel that you've got to lie in the bed that you've made essentially just because you've made certain choices in life doesn't mean that you have to kind of stick them out just because you feel obliged to because you feel like you'd look like a failure or you'd let people down if you you know pulled out of your course or if you moved away or if you changed your job because your high pressure job actually isn't enjoyable for you make the choices that are right for you okay so then we've got the witch and her cauldron so this is saying that you're in a process you're in a process and so not everything will come to full closure and fruition in this month, but it will over the next few months. So don't worry. This is a process for you and you're learning something through doing this. We've also got the, the black W. So I don't count this as an initial, although you can if you want to. To me, this is a wish charm because I only have one black um, letter and it's the W. It was just like a bonus one that I got given. So if you want to pause... The video and make a wish while looking at this charm then go ahead and do so i think it's so interesting that you got that when we've got all of this about allowing yourself to believe that positive things will come towards you and this feeling of holding your vision so that's really really nice i also see the octopus here so again i feel like a lot of you have been having trouble in work i feel a lot of you have taken on a job that's very high responsibility very high stress and now you're regretting it but you don't want to pull out of it because you're parents would be upset or you feel like you'd become the family failure or you'd be the only one of your friends that graduated and didn't get that high flying job or didn't stick to it so again like what I was saying make the choices that are right for you don't don't be prideful and be a martyr in this situation but the octopus is talking about someone who's very busy has a lot of things on their plate a lot of things that they need to juggle and then we've got the black swan. So this talks about someone very unique and very beautiful. And that's you in this situation. Everyone has their own unique path in life to follow. 
And we have the snail as well. So that's like what I was saying. It's going to unfold slowly. You're not going to get closure on everything in this month, but you are going to see some positive shifts. And I feel it's mostly within yourself. Like it shifts your mindset and your mood first. And then when that inner work has been done, it starts to affect your outer world. But I do see some positive things coming in for you with that Treasure Island charm. So we've got the hairdryer here. Sorry, Treasure Island card, I mean. The hairdryer is about someone who is blowing hot and cold, who is kind of struggling or refusing to make a decision for whatever reason. And then we've got this horseshoe, which kind of landed roughly, roughly flat. So this indicates that there is a matter of luck going on here. And I, I'm not going to assign it to good luck or bad luck. I'm just saying that some things are going to unfold and it's going to seem like it was completely down to luck or chance in this month. So let's see which set of dice I'm going to roll for you now, pile number three. Five. Okay, that is the actions, story cubes. And how many of these dice am I rolling for pile number three? One. Let's see if we can get some more. Okay, seven. Great. So if you're new to my channel, I use a lot of different divination techniques to get a full reading, just because I like to see synchronicities in charms and cards and dice like we've seen already. So what is coming up for pile number three in June 2020? Okay, let me just take a look and see what we've got. Uh -huh. Okay, so first we've got the person walking through this door. So this again is saying like, it's, it's kind of like a new chapter for you. Feels like this is a new situation that you're opening up to. Um, and that you're, you're kind of turning a corner in many ways. You also see the person being woken up by this alarm clock. So this feels like an awakening for you with this ace of swords, like this shift in perspective, this new way of thinking. Then we've got the person kicking the ball. And to me, that's like you sending that energy out there. So just remembering that when you visualize, when you try to manifest, you are sending that energy out there. So make sure that you're sending it out with full expectation that it's going to come about with full belief and full release as well. You don't want to send it out and not be 100% sure about it or not be 100% feeling that you deserve it because then it's just going to bounce right back at you so you want to give it a good kick and send it as far into the universe as it will go we've also got the person who's knocking over this vase here so again i'm getting this feeling that you've given yourself a hard time recently maybe you think that you've been the cause of this difficult situation in your life maybe it's because you've chosen certain things or you just are taking on responsibility for that and i just want to say like we have to make our own mistakes in life and we have to learn our own lessons and that's part of being alive when we're never going to learn from other people telling us don't do that or oh you don't want to go down that path because it was bad for me like humans by our very nature are curious and we want to experience things for ourselves so just release any feelings of shame or blame that you have towards yourself with that strength card coming out as the first card in your reading i think it's very important that you do release these feelings that you're carrying around. So we've got the person blindfolded who's touching this person's face on this hold your vision card. So again, it's like working out what it is that you want, working out what that vision really is and, and getting there, you know, making sure that you keep reminding yourself daily with those images or those affirmations. We've got the person who is laughing. So again, allowing yourself to have a happier time in June, there's a feeling of more lighter energy coming in for you, especially with that lovely Treasure Island card, which is so nice. And here we've got the, I think it's like a chocolate bar that's breaking in two. So this again just makes me think of like, we're closing off a cycle now, we're putting an end to something and we're saying, okay, I'm breaking with that relationship or I'm breaking with that job or that friendship group and I'm just moving forward and moving on to a better life for myself. So that's all I have for you today, group number three, and I really hope that you've enjoyed it. And thank you so much for joining me. Do let me know in the comments below how it resonated. I'd love to hear what's going on for you guys. And 
do like, share with a friend and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I will film the love predictions for June pretty soon. That's probably going to be the next video that's coming out on the channel anyway. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in that. If not, there are going to be plenty more videos coming up as well. So, so don't worry. And all of the links, if you want a private reading or if you want to show your support for the channel um, by becoming a patron or through giving me a little tip or a small donation, they're all in the description box. Thank you so, so much to everyone who has done that and to everyone who is considering doing it. It's really so beautiful that so many of you have shown your gratitude for the work that I do in that way. It's really lovely. So have a lovely rest of your day, group number three, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Take care.